you talked about owning who you are on the court. You know, me personally, I love switching up the hair. You do this, need to have my nails done. Right now they're not done. They were ripped off over the weekend. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of backlash and criticism about that. What do you think about the criticism when it comes to that? Like, oh, you're less of a hooper, this and that. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think that the message is females should just be able to appear how they want to appear on the court and know that, you know, at the end of the day, whether we have lashes, nails, hair done, like we still give your favorite team 30. So it's like, that's the mentality exactly. that we have. And it's, I think that's the mentality that we all have. Like this is something I take pride in and it's very therapeutic it for me. So if you want me to be like on a mental like spiral or have a breakdown like throughout the week, then I suggest yeah. you just let me go do what I got to do for self care. Welcome back to Sometimes I Hoop. I'm your host, Haley Jones. Humble brag, number one recruit, class of 2019, Natty Champ, most outstanding player of the Final Four, preseason All-America first team. But this isn't about V. The Carolina Blue is making its debut on the pod today. We have McDonald's All-American, 1,000-point club score, first team all ACC, certified bucket, North Carolina's very own Deja Kelly. Thanks for hopping on the pod. Oh, well, thanks for having me. Hearing all your accolades, I, those are definitely my goals. So <laughs> I'm like, wow. But no, thanks for having me on. Oh, of course. Okay, so we'll just kind of hop into what's going on right now. So our season is winding down already. We're both upperclassmen. I feel like this season has flown by, like we're out of the kind of the COVID years and everything like that. But how are you feeling headed into these last couple of games before the ACC tournament? Yeah, I don't think it's fully hit me yet that season is kind of like it's almost March and like that's insane it definitely has flown by but I think um definitely closing in on the ACC tournament it's exciting it's a lot of different emotions just because you know that's when it's really important and these last few games of league play are probably the most important um just you know determining what seed and if we get a double buy just things like that um so I think it's just a lot of excitement though all around um, not really nervous yet, mm -hmm. but um, I think just, yeah, more excited than anything. For sure. There's kind of expectations and pressure with these last few games and what it means for seating in the conference tournament, but also the NCAA tournament. I know for us, we dropped games to USC and most recently Washington, and it definitely makes a difference in how we approach that next game. Like coming out to Arizona, we knew it was going to be crazy, this and that, but do you feel kind of any sense of urgency to win out ACC conference play to get the right seeds that you want? Yeah, for sure. So like we dropped two games this past week um, mm -hmm. to non-ranked teams. So it's like, it, it, granted, we're down three starters. Um, mm -hmm. So that definitely takes a toll. But regardless, it's just like, okay, proceeding because our goal, you know, on the opposite side of y'all is we're, we're trying to host. Um, we're mm -hmm. we're um, trying to get that seed that um, being the top 16. So that's like our goal. And that's what we're pushing for. So there is definitely a little more sense of urgency. Um, within these past few games, just because we know they'll mean a lot more for that seating and determining yeah. whether we host or not. Um, so yeah, that, I think that's definitely something we're all looking at, especially me. I'm like, that's the goal. We'd love to pull, have mm -hmm. the first two rounds here in Carmichael. So we will see. But yeah. Your junior class at North Carolina has really brought you guys back onto the map with you, Alyssa and Kennedy have really been the pillars of that program. So with all three of you guys, when you guys are all healthy, you're all getting buckets out there hooping, what about that mix do you think makes you guys unstoppable? Like what about that chemistry? I think just the fact that <clears throat> we've been able to build it, you know, since we got here, you know, a lot of teams mm -hmm. have multiple players. We had five, <laughs> five um, in that class. And I think just us being able to learn each other, you know, in off season and summer and, um, and then just playing together because as freshmen we all had to come in and make an impact right away basically so it was like we were able to grow that experience together make those freshman mistakes together um and just learn what each other needs from each other on and how we can lead each other how we can help each other um bring our best and i think that's kind of what has built our chemistry even stronger especially now as as the upperclassmen um we've just been able to play off each other so well because we know how each other plays we know each other's games pretty well by now um mm -hmm. so and just obviously the chemistry off the court has definitely helped that um just knowing what each other needs mentally um physically even but I think just that has definitely helped our chemistry for sure for sure I mean I have a core group here at Stanford with what we like to say the funky four but like <laughs> being being able to 
be a unit from freshman year and everybody make an impact just plays dividends now on the back end where it's like you've been in these high level situations, you've been in these intense games and like being able to make those mistakes as a freshman, now you're able to relate to those younger teammates and be like, I've been there. Like you can just help and be a leader in a different way, which is very powerful for those younger teammates, which I feel like it's hard to understand, but it's like, you know, sometimes I'm at practice time, like they don't want to hear from me right now. Like, right. but you know, you have to speak up because you've been yep. there. Yep. So it's, it's definitely different being, you know, an underclassman, then moving up and then being older and just having these experiences. But I mean, your team has come a long way and you guys have had big wins in conference play, but what have been the biggest differences from the beginning of the season to conference play to where you're at now? How do you think you guys have grown as a unit? Personally, the upper class classmen, we've had to grow just as leaders um, mm -hmm. a lot, which has definitely had its ups and downs. But I'll speak for me personally. I think, you know, we have a lot of young guys. We have, um, I don't even know how many, a lot, <laughs> a lot of uh, young rookies, freshmen, red shirts um, who are coming back. And it's been it's been difficult to try to learn how to lead them. I'll also, you know, trying to stay on our game and just trying to figure it out, just kind of intertwining the two. But I think we've done a pretty good job so far, especially now with um three starters out i think we've mm -hmm. we've needed them more than ever so just trying to be that positive voice for them to so they know like we need you but we, i also understand the position you're in but i just yeah. you know whatever you need from me let me help you you know help us basically and i think that's definitely been the change from preseason to now the end of conference play um just them stepping up more i think has definitely helped us just because we have that you know these young gritty players who are ready to help in any way they can. And um, just as us upperclassmen, it's only me and Kennedy right now that are uh, mm -hmm. playing. So um, just us trying to learn how to lead them in the best way that we can to um, help us pull out these even bigger wins now. You know, there's a lot of teams who kind of came out from under the radar this year. Like the arc of the season has been crazy. And I know a lot of teams who start out unranked are now in the top 15, but like, what have you been thinking about the landscape of women's basketball and just the ups and downs, the upsets this year across all conferences? What has that been like? It's been insane. There's, it's literally been a whole roller coaster just watching, you know, the rankings and just watching mm -hmm. these games, how close they are, who upsets who, like, Things like that, I think, is definitely it, it obviously shows growth of the women's game because usually you have like the set, you know, top maybe 10 schools who are, you know, always elite and always at the top. But yeah. it's like we have, you know, no knock, but like even y'all, like y'all y'all getting beat in conference. It's just like mm -hmm. conference play, I think, is just really hard and, and everyone's setting up their preseason schedule really well, too. So I think that it's, it's fun to watch, but it's also like. You, you're going to get everyone's best at any time and you never know. Um, so like even seeing team, like in our conference, seeing like Duke, they're yeah the highest ranked, I think, in our league. Um, and it's like they weren't ranked coming into the season. And that was a huge surprise for us as well because we were like, you know, we didn't think they did that well last year. And, mm -hmm. and just seeing, you know, the, the growth and development that they've made, um, that's just that's pretty cool to see as well, just being a part of that, too. So I think the growth has definitely been amazing on the women's side. Just different teams stepping up, but also different players. And I feel like in the ACC, there's been a lot of sleeper players really step up during league play. Has anyone in particular kind of caught your eye? I think one that is really has really been impressive to me all season really is um, Tanai Latson from mm -hmm. Florida State, a freshman, um, and has basically given all of the teams buckets. I think <laughs> so. It's like you know we can't really do anything with that. She's definitely my pick for freshman of the year. Um, mm -hmm. Could be in the talks for player of the year as well. But her being able to put that team on her back as well, just as a freshman, I think that's pretty pretty impressive, um, especially in ACC. We've been having this conference debate. Who has the best conference? Me personally, I'm obviously biased towards the Pac-12. However, I really am interested to see what you think because everybody's been like, if you're from the SEC, that's the best. Big Ten, that's the best. But what's your take? So I am biased as well. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people would agree with me. I'll just say this. But I think the ACC is number one. Okay. I have the Pac-12 at two. Mm -hmm. I personally think the SEC has had a bit of a drop-off. Oh, the That's team. That's just my take. Okay, that is just my take. take. You know, with um, South Carolina and LSU obviously being just so dominant 
in that mm-hmm. uh, league. I think that, you know, kind of after that, it's like, Ooh, it's, I think it's a big job. difference. It's, it's a, it's a big difference. I think okay. in that league. Um, and I think the big 12 is, has taken a drop as well. Okay. But, okay. You know, so I would say the ACC and the PAC 12 have definitely separated mm-hmm. themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't really know where to rank them. I think the Big Ten is third. I think the Big Ten yeah. is definitely a has been a really good, consistent conference. Um, they just all, yeah, they all. Utah, it was a team that I didn't, I had no. Well, it's Pac twelve, but I knew mm-hmm. I, they're a team that I had no clue um, was even oh. good. I was like, what? And I've seen them in the top ten. I think the past like three weeks, and I'm like, mm-hmm. I have to watch them play, and I have yet to see them play. But um, yeah, the Big Ten. I think I, I have the ACC. Pac-12, Big Ten. Definitely. Okay. I love, I love, I love the hot take. Okay. I know for us, the Pac-12, we're just so amazing. You know, for us in Utah to just be 3-4, UCLA, Arizona, Colorado, the list just goes on. But why the ACC? Why, why is ACC number one for you? What sets it apart? I think you can see just the level of, you know, you never know who's going to win. I think we have mm. three people or two people tied for first, three tied for second, four including us tied for third and fourth like Mm -hmm. it's just I think everyone has more than one loss and I think it's grown in a way because you know last year NC State was so dominant that they were you know they were at the top and then the year before that it was Louisville who went or yeah the year before that when Dana Evans was there and they were just very dominant so I think now us I think we've just grown and we've just gotten so many good players and I think the ACC is a league of guards, um, mm-hmm. so it's a lot of really good guard play. And like with the additions of Tania Latson and Olivia, Olivia Miles coming into her own, I think for Notre yeah. Dame. And um, I think just seeing that, that's definitely made us a lot more versatile and a lot more competitive. And everyone can have a night. Um, it, yeah, I don't think you're safe in the ACC. Basically, there's not one team that's just you know dominating, but in a way, all teams are dominating in their own way. So yeah. Kind of taking it back a little bit to your basketball origins, the roots, just kind of tell me about what got you into basketball. Why was it basketball? What brought you to it? And what made it for you be like, this is the real deal. This is what I want to pursue. Yeah, I would say my parents. My dad played um, college basketball at Texas, at the University of Texas, where I originally committed for the first Mm -hmm. time. Um, And then he played overseas for, I think, like 13, 14 years. And then my mom played college basketball as well. And then obviously she was a coach. And she kind of pushed me to play basketball. And I mostly just wanted to play because my dad played. And even though she was a coach, so she kind of took offense to that until Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, um, I'll play. So she kind of got me started like at three or four and then she started a team for me and I was maybe like kindergarten first grade uh and then ever since then she was kind of just training me and it was when I got to about fifth sixth grade where I was like okay this is something that you know I want to do long term I want to set goals for myself for for basketball like uh this is something that I can see myself being pretty good at and then if I really try if I really put in the work and that's kind of when I set my goals and um you know, made a dream board of, you know, WNBA, getting my first offer by hopefully eighth grade, Mm -hmm. um, being a McDonald's All-American and Jordan Bain All-American, all those things. And that, that was when I really was like, okay, this is something I want to pursue. And this is something that I'm going to make a lot of sacrifices for and that I'm willing to. Um, So that's kind of how I got into it. And then my mom coached and trained me ever since all through high school and she got me to where I am. So That's amazing. You mentioned, you know, originally wanting to go with Texas. You committed there in the seventh grade. What led to that early commitment? Was it your dad playing there? Was it something else? Kind of how was that process? Yeah, it was mostly my dad playing there and I was just always around the school. So because he played there, I would go to a lot of games. It was an hour from San Antonio. So it was an easy drive. Um, Mm -hmm. So I would, you know, go to basketball games, go to football games just be around all the time. And I was like, this, I'm in love with this place. Like, how can I not? My dad went here. It's just mm-hmm. very family. Like it's so close to home. Um, so yeah. So as soon as they offered me in seventh grade, I was like, Oh, I'm taking it. Like I am going here. Done this deal. Is the place I'm going to go. Done deal. And of course I got a lot of backlash for it. But I was like, I'm 13. Like, how are y'all mad at me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. right. But, um, but yeah, so it, it was just that kind of thing. And, you know, as I got older and got to see more and, 
got to kind of just explore a little more options. I was like, okay, let me take a step back. You were 13 girl, like, come on. <laughs> so I had to, yeah. So I had to just, you know, I was like, okay, I just want to explore my options. And that's when I decommitted, I think going into my junior year. Um, and that just opened up a lot more doors for me. Texas was still an option, but you know, I, that's when I started to understand, you know, the level of what I was trying to play at and, and the things that I was trying to accomplish at that time. And, um, that led me to North Carolina now. Why North Carolina? Like it kind of just came into the picture, all these different things. How did that work? Why did you end up choosing there? Yeah. So North Carolina was actually the very last school to recruit me. Um, Yeah. The Mm -hmm. summer um, going into my senior year, uh, it was like August. So it was already after the summer was over. I already kind of had my mind made up on like at least a top five, six. And I was like, okay, like, now I got to figure out when I'm going to visit. And, mm-hmm. um, coach Banghart, she had just got the job, I think that May or June, um, mm-hmm. of that summer. And I kind of knew of her from Princeton, but I, you know, I never even looked North Carolina's way. Mm-hmm. Um, so she called me and, and I was just like, I don't like, I was telling my mom, I was like, no, like I already, we yeah. already did all this research on all these other schools. Like there's no point of adding another. And she's like, at least listen to what she has to say. So she called me and I think we talked for maybe about an hour, hour and a half. And she just kind of laid the whole, you know, plan out how she came to North Carolina to not only challenge herself as a coach, but to just better the program and bring the program back to the national map. It was it was once on. Mm -hmm. Um, And the vision that she had for me was to, you know, basically help build the program to that and just, you know, build around me and have me be a big impact on, you know, the team success and and the program success eventually. And that was something that I wanted to do. You know, I wanted, I had the the bigger schools on me that, you know, I could have came and been a part of, you know, a winning program from jump, like off rip Mm -hmm. and just been another, a part of that. But I, I wanted to go to a school where I knew that I was going to have solely an impact and, um, be, a huge part of, of the ongoing success and be the part of a rebuild. And that's, that's what I wanted to do. And that's what I was really focused on. And that's the discussion that me and Coach Banghart had. And she could eventually convince me to take a visit. And I did. And I fell in love uh, instantly. And I was so mad that I did, but I was like, <laughs> I can't like it. And then they have the number one broadcast journalism school here. So I think that definitely played a part. And I was like, Oh, well, it's a no brainer. But um, yeah, I think, the biggest thing was just the vision um, that me and Coach Banghart talked about going into the recruiting process because I was like, that's exactly what I wanted. I want to do. You know, I want my, I want to leave a legacy from wherever I go, and mm-hmm. I think I can definitely do that at North Carolina. And I think she will definitely be a big help to help me do that, as well as just becoming a better person and a, a better, you know, journalist and things like that. So. There was a lot that played into it, but the main thing was, you know, just me leaving a legacy, knowing I can leave a legacy somewhere um, and bring build the program back up. Yeah, I mean, that's something special. And it takes a special type of person to, you know, come from high school and you're winning all these awards off grip and you're on a winning team and then you got to go somewhere and rebuild. Like, that's hard. UNC has kind of been one of those pillar programs historically, and you guys did bring them back on the map because for a few years they were kind of down and out. But when you're stepping into that freshman year, new coach, you're the new kid on campus, this and that, like we said, it's a historical program. How was it handling those expectations stepping into that those first few games your freshman year? It was definitely tough. It was not easy. It's not, has not been an easy process. You know, freshman year, I, we came into, we had five junior, I mean, five freshmen coming into the team with a lot of older seniors and grad um, transfers. So it was like, whoa, <laughs> I'm like, this is mm-hmm. something we have to kind of live up to. We have Steph, we had Stephanie Watts who came back that, that year, um, who was already at Carolina. So it was like, this is kind of what we're looking up to. And that first year was not easy. You know, we went from hoping like, having to be like, we have to win this game in order to make the tournament, like Mm -hmm. those type of feelings. And um, like I said, uh, us three freshmen, me, Kennedy and Alyssa, we had to come in right away and we didn't really have a chance to be freshmen. Like we didn't have time to 
you know, really go through those mistakes and really be like, okay, well, we'll figure it out later. We'll work on it in the summer. Like, no, like we had to come in and, and make an impact right away. And it was, that was definitely hard, but it was something that we are thankful for now because it's like, if we went, we, if we hadn't went through those struggles then, then we wouldn't have been able to build ourselves into what we are now. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, and then that goes to sophomore year last year, you know, we, to um, us almost being a, a team to host and, um, now this year, you know, we're, we're on the verge of hosting. So I think you can just see that, that those growth steps and, um, the growth of the program just within the past three years, which is really exciting, but it definitely has not been an easy process. And, mm-hmm. you know, now being an upperclassman, now having younger ones who I was in that position and having to help them through it and, um, help them help us the best that they can. I think it's just been a really beautiful process to see and to be a part of, um, and yeah, I'm excited for us to do a lot more. I know we have a lot more work to do, but yeah, it's, it's just been, I think it's definitely a, a story that um, will go down in history for Carolina. Freshman year is hard. And like you said, playing immediately and having that expected of you to be an impact player is difficult. I mean, I know for myself, I came in and Tara said, okay, no one through four by halfway through summer. I said, huh? <laughs> All four (laughs) positions understood. And like, it's hard. It's an entire new system. You're playing with these upperclassmen. Like you said, play like Stephanie Watts, like an all all ACC performer and this, that, and the third. It's difficult to come and find your role. The year afterwards, I mean, you're moving and grooving. You're playing South Carolina, this and that. You lost the game, but you still had a great individual performance. How did that last season now kind of fuel you moving into this year you know you have expectations this year you're ranked in the top 25 from week one this and the third how has it been kind of using that momentum it's been really um exciting I think that was that South Carolina game was definitely a turning point not only for me but just for the team um Mm -hmm. just because we realized you know how good we can be you know we only lost one um senior that played and um and Carly uh being our point guard, but I think, you know, we knew that we were returning everyone else. So we were like, I want everyone to be extremely proud of like how we perform. Yes. It hurt. It's going to hurt for a while that we lost, but um, knowing that this was what we were bringing back and that we made it that far with the group that we have. um, I think that was definitely encouraging, especially going in the summer. Um, Mm -hmm. And we already had that chemistry. We are, you know, we were a young group. We started four sophomores last year and, um, you know, so we knew we were young, but we also knew that that was definitely, we could only, you know, move forward and only build on, on, uh, off of that. And for me, I was like, okay, this is going to be a huge summer for you. This is going to be, this next year is going to be a huge year for you. Just knowing the goals that you have set for myself and as well as for the team, you know, our goal is to make it, to get to the final four. It's in Dallas. So mm-hmm. the hometown basic mm-hmm. kind of, so it's right like, there, but yep. It, yeah. So um, just having those ex- expectations and just really locking into the, the main goals that we have. I think, you know, after us making it to the Sweet 16 and playing how we did, um, that's when everyone's mentality started to shift. So now it's not our goals aren't to just make the tournament. Our goals aren't to, you know, hopefully make it past the first round. Now our goals are to make it to the final four, win a national championship, win an ACC championship. Um, and that wasn't the talk before you know freshman year was like okay let's try to make the tournament let's try to win past the first round so I think you know you can just hear and see the mental shift that we all had um as a young group and that definitely is showing this year just because you know we we're just we just have a different mentality it's not because we know that now we have built ourselves to be one of the top teams in the country so now we have to act like it and act accordingly we talked a little bit about earlier just like the ACC the rivalries this and that Duke is a huge rivalry for y'all. What was your first experience with that rivalry like? How is that? Duke is a completely different team than they were last year. So last year we beat them twice. Not to brag, but... It's a little something. um, It's a little something, but we beat them twice. And um, seeing their growth and seeing how much of a different team they are, even regardless of having a lot of the same players, you know, they brought Mm -hmm. in a few transfers, but um, I think it's definitely made it even more fun for, for obviously the men's side is the men's side, but for us, I think it's just made it a lot more exciting and a lot more to look forward to um, just because we know how good of a team they are now, you know, it's playing another ranked opponent. Now that's how we want to see it. Not just, Oh, it's Duke, but also it's Duke. So like Mm -hmm. regardless of who they have, regardless of their record, regardless of ours, you know, we're both going to come to play. Um, So that first game we had this, this year was, 
insane that we had a sold out student section that was the first in program history so like just doing things like that just seeing how important that rivalry is and how you know it's living up to the expectations as well on the women's side as well as the men's um I think that's just exciting and just makes those games even more fun you know we always say we hate Duke and they hate us so it's like we we put we play like it and we play physical and that game gets scrappy and the fans are hectic and crazy so um just that environment I think is super fun playing Duke So moving off the court a little bit, NIL has been huge for both of us, for women's basketball, for women's sports, for everybody, really. What has like what has NIL meant to you? What has that process been like? I know it's been different for everybody with agents, deals being signed, this and that, but when did it get real for you? I think it got real for me when I was able to provide for my family. Um mm-hmm. I think, and just help them in ways that I couldn't even imagine doing two years ago at the age of 20, 21. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that that NIL has just been a blessing. Um, Just being able to, you know, really capitalize on my brand and, and everything that I have worked so hard for in the years before, just, you know, trying to build my brand, trying to build my name and it finally coming into play and me being able to, you know, succeed off of it, I think has definitely been amazing. And just seeing all other athletes being able to capitalize on that as well. It's like, this is such a huge growth step and we're moving in the right direction, but it's Mm -hmm. like for us to now be able to, you know, just provide in different ways, you know, everyone has different, different backgrounds, different stories, but it's definitely been beneficial in all sorts of different ways for everybody, which I think is just very um, encouraging to see. But for me, yeah, I think just being able to to provide and just being able to help out and just being able to give back um, to my community to, you know, hosting my first um, DK25 camp. That was mm-hmm. amazing. That was something that I didn't think I would be doing anytime soon yeah. um, until, and, until NIL. So just being able to do things like that, I think is truly a blessing because while you're still in school, while you're still a collegiate athlete, um, literally while you're still playing and going to class mm-hmm. and having to worry about all the things a regular student athlete would you're also allowed to give back and you're also allowed to you know give back in ways that you know most people have to wait till they get to the league or in the nba at wnba and things like that so um i think it's just truly been a been a blessing overall yeah i mean i saw your dk25 camp like (laughs) being able to interact with the next generation at such a young age where you're really still able to like relate to them and then being able to like tangibly be around you and get to know you and ask questions, do this and that just does such an impact to them that I don't even know if I still understand, but Mm -hmm. it's so powerful. And I feel like NIL has given us the platform to speak on issues, to advocate, to give back, to be that role model for people all across the country, across the world, really. I think that something that's been a little bit of conversation has just been the NIL space for Black women what it's been like across the country. How how has your process been being a black woman in this space, being signing these huge deals, like having partners like Beats, Dunkin' Donuts, Forever 21. Like I see all this stuff on like Instagram and Twitter and I just get so excited. Like from an outside perspective, <laughs> like anybody signing these big deals, I'm just like so just in awe, so happy for people, this and that. And I know that people are feeling the exact same way whenever I post whatever it may be, but how has it been like navigating this space? It has been, it has not been easy, but it's definitely been super fun just being able to learn about different things as well. Mm -hmm. Just more about myself too, like what I like, what I value. Um, And that's kind of what I, how I look at it. And whenever I look at getting a new deal or what, like, really, is it okay? Is it true to my values? Is it Mm -hmm. true to what I believe in? Is it true to what I want to do down the road? Are they going to, you know, um, compromise with me as far as okay if if we do this then I want to give back to this like just things like that I think it's just learning a lot but definitely just being a a black female um I think it's definitely had allowed me to see a different perspective you know signing with actively black I think Mm -hmm. I've just learned a lot just alone in that deal and and it's just it feels really empowering to be able to represent or be the first 
women's collegiate athlete to represent the the brand and mm -hmm. you know just it just means so much more like I said and it just it opens a lot more doors down the line as well but you know and just being with Forever 21 that was that was probably one of my favorite um, partnerships just because it it preached you know being comfortable being you being comfortable yeah. in your own skin um being comfortable with no matter how you look no matter what your skin color is no matter you know anything I think that was um the, that was the main message of, of the partnership and I was so happy to be a part of it because that's that's what I value that's what I preach um you know I'm comfortable in being you know being black and being very feminine off the mm -hmm. court and having my lashes and nails done while I'm playing like things yep. like that I think that um, definitely just sent the right message and um so just being able to be a part of partnerships like that and being able to be a part of brands that respect the values that you have as well um i think it's just it's been super super cool and uh really uh, blessed to be a part of them As we wrap up here, we do a little segment called the vibe check, which is going to be rapid fire answers. I hope you're okay. good at them. We had some trouble in the past with, oh God. Some, with the entire <laughs> portion of it. It's going to be good. I believe. Okay. Okay. So here we go. What is the one drill you never want to see on the practice plan? Uh, probably the defensive slides, having to guard our practice boys full court. Mm, sounds no. awful. Yeah. Sounds awful already. Yeah, no, ma'am. Um, game winning shot or game winning steal? Game winning shot. Yeah, duh. Me too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> off the court, go to sneaker. Oh, probably Jordan Fours. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love Fours. Yeah. Okay. And then favorite team issued Jordans? Um, probably are. Sixes, our PEs that we got last year for the tournament. They were like the all Carolina blue with like mm. a cream lace. Okay. Yeah, those are probably my favorite so far. Okay, sounds better than our running shoes we get. All right. <laughs> um, and one or three pointer? And one. Yep. Toughest place to play. Oh, oh man. See, this is where the rapid fire drops off. Uh, <laughs> see, I know. <laughs> toughest place to play probably um nc state because i i hate their fans so okay yeah uh, understood go. ice pack or ice bath uh, ice pack okay sure. what is your biggest <laughs> basketball ick uh, probably when a defender is like you know, they guard you good for like one good possession mm. and then they think that they just guarded you like really well okay. the whole game. And it's like, all right, girl, then please give me the ball back so I can just <laughs> go to work real quick. Mm. That's probably my biggest ache. And when they get all hype and I'm just like, pipe down. That's yes, my I, biggest ache, you, you have one time. You have one time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what is the college with the best facilities? Uh, how am I supposed to know that? You know, I'm just going to say mine because I, mm, mm. I'm biased. Yeah, okay, I'll say okay. that. Okay. <laughs> and then what is your best impersonation of Coach Banghart? Oh god. Babe. Babe, I just need you to, you know, babe, come on. Like you're better than that. Come on, babe. She I says babe. To, I just need you to be but yeah. She calls us babe in a very high pitched voice and we make fun of her for it all the time. It's like, babe, come on now. Babe. I love that. <laughs> like, yeah. I love that has to be that. my best. Deja, this has been so fun. Thank you yeah. so much for coming on. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. I love talking about all these things and just bringing a girl in the women's game. It's fun. So love thank it. You. Well, this has been Sometimes I Hoop. We will be back every week with a new guest following the latest on women's hoops. Thanks for listening.